de balance principles. Sóc continuum mechanics can be considered a science and then, as any science is based on hypothesis. Principles are they called sometimes or other times they are called they are called the hypothesis. So we are going to postulate some things as in any science. So you know for instance that uh, the, the, uh, Newton's uh, mechanics, uh, mechanic, uh, Newton's mechanics postulates some principles. First Newton's law, second Newton's law, third Newton's law. Okay, the relati relativity theory postulates these and additional, uh, an additional postulates. Okay, so every theory contains some postulates. What is a postulate? Something that cannot be proven. It's something that is heuristic. So the more general are the postulates, the more abstract, the most general is the theory. And postulates are the kernel of any theory. That's something in a theory that just are the building blocks of the theory. Based on this, the theory then, mathematics or whatever, does theorems. Theorems are not postulates. Theorems are proofs that are done from the postulates, okay? So that's why we, we, we built the theory. So here we are doing that. We are starting with some postulates and we are getting theorems, equations, that constitute the most important part of our baggage to our goal, which is our goal, finally, to have enough equations to solve, at least theoretically, the all the unknowns that we have in the continuum me continuous mechanics problem. So far we have seen some entities. We've talked about displacements. We've talked about the strains. We've talked about the stresses. These are something that we would like to know in our continuum mechanics problem and that we would like to solve in a general case. Solve them either analytically or approximately by numerical methods. But for solving these unknowns we need some equations. And for solving these equations, we need a theory. These equations will come out from the th as theorems of this theory, which will be built on principles, on postulates. Okay? And these are the postulates that we are going to do. Some of them will be very familiar to you because you have already followed some continuum mechanics, uh, sorry, some structural mechanics, or even some mechanics courses. So are familiar. Other are not so much. So we'll talk about conservation of mass. I mean, that's familiar with you because mass, we think that mass, at least in our daily life, cannot be created nor destroyed. Okay? Well, not in fact. No, that, that, that Einstein theory, for instance, said the mass can be converted into energy. You know that? The famous equation of Einstein, E equal mc squared. Mass, uh, the, uh, the mass, uh, uh, times the square of the uh, light uh, speed is the energy that can be just transformed this mass into. But this can be done also at high speed velocities, at velocities of the body which is close to the light speed. At the small velocities we will consider that mass is constant. Okay, The mass in every particle and the sum of every particle in a continuum body will be always the same. Volume can change, but all the properties can change. But mass will postulate. I mean, that's quite something that is familiar to us. But I mean, the first guy that asked this question, is mass constant? That did really some clever assumption, okay? Which was consistent with his observation. After that, if he had observed at, at, at high speed velocities, at the relati relativity uh, 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 velocities, he wouldn't have done this hypothesis. That's what Einstein did. He just broke this, this hypothesis to make a wider theory, which is a relativity theory. So we are not in the relativity, in the relativity theory uh, framework, so we post the conservation of mass. And when we also admit something that you already know, which were postulated, some postulates that were done by Einstein in the rigid body. Uh, mechanics. So we will extend the linear momentum balance 
which are the first Newton's law, force equal mass times acceleration, but that can be just for postulation that the linear moment is balanced. Look, here we talk about balance, here we talk about conservation. Conservation, the, the word says what I'm, I'm referring to, that the mass is conserved. Balance is another thing. Balance says that it can vary, okay? Linear momentum of a continuum medium can balance, can, can vary, but in a balanced way. So if that side diminishes, that size increases. If that size increases, that size diminishes. That's what we call a balance principle, okay? We talk also about angular momentum, which is the third Newton law, okay? The equivalent to force equal mass to acceleration, which somehow the, the, the equivalent that the torque equal the central moment of inertia times angular acceleration. That's the second, the third level law. Then we also postulate the balance principle of energy. We'll say that the energy that enters into the body is just balanced in some terms, in some entities. Okay? And we will postulate that. We will not prove that. We will postulate that. That is the first thermodynamic principle, which talks about balance, not exactly conservation, but balance of energy. Okay? So we postulate these four, and from this we will obtain a number of theorems that finally will be written in terms of equations, partial differential equations. And these partial differential equations, we had just mentioned a minute ago some of them, the equilibrium equations, are the differential equations that have to be solved, that define our, our uh, boundary value problem. We'll obtain also some boundary conditions for this, for, from this. Okay. Then there is another thing that we will examine, that's a little more complex, which is the second thermodynamic law. I will talk about that, but it's very important. It's fundamental, that equation. And then we obtain equations, as I said, from these. These equations will be obtained in two forms, global or integral equations. So we obtain equations that say the integral of that is equal to zero, or the integral of this is equal to that, etc. Or we will look rather by local forms of these equations. We see that there is a localization principle that allows passing from global equations to local, local equations. That means that are equations that are fulfilled not as integral, but partial differential equations that are, fulfi that are fulfilled point-wise, point-to-point, okay? 